welcome back to the Inspired Entrepreneur with Heather Hope. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, this is Heather Hope, and this is the Inspired Entrepreneur podcast. This is coming from my book that is th- named the same thing, The Inspired Entrepreneur. 366 days of inspiration for the entrepreneur. So if you are into law of attraction, especially Abraham Hicks, any of the channeled infinite intelligence, Bashar, Sanaya, Roman, you are in the right place. If you have a business, if you're self-employed, if you are, are wanting even to be self-employed to start a business, this is the right place, the right place for you. Okay. And, and as I was talking about um, Abraham Hicks, Bashar, and Saniya Roman, if you have not heard of Saniya Roman yet, you need to go check out her books. I have six of them on my, let's see, I have two on my desk right now, and I have four others on my shelf right next to me. Um, if you want to read, what in my opinion, the Bible about money channeled from Infinite Intelligence, Pick up the book, Creating Money by Sanaya Roman. It is absolutely the best book I've ever read, just in my life, really, Um, you know, next to Abraham Hicks. So there you go. (laughs) That's my tip for you today. Go get that book. It's so good. It's the only book I took with me to Mexico. I don't think I, I don't necessarily, I don't know if I opened it up at all because I was just kind of busy being sore from walking around so much <laughs> that I just had it there though. Anyhow, let's get started guys. Um, happy Monday. Today's October 26th. I am recording a bunch of these yesterday, Sunday. So because I'm working on another project right now. Um, I'm working on something totally different. Um, and I have a lot of changes going on. When you focus on the the aspects of things that you love, just in life, not just in business, but in life, you will attract something really cool, something really big. Um, Exactly. You're going to attract exactly what you love, everything. So for many, many months, I I, I have appreciated things that I love and I've appreciated them so much that now I attracted an entirely completely different business that I had no idea existed and it checks off every single box of the things that I love doing everything it's like everything Abraham teaches us that the universe conspires to bring everything all in one like it's like we we just like sometimes we think of like oh I want to start a business or I want to have a job that makes a lot of money but there's so many other things that you want right you want an enjoyable experience you want all these other things along with that job you don't want to just make a lot of money you want all the other 10 things on your list that you love doing just in general in your life and I focused on the aspects, not looking for another business to start, not totally, not any of that. I wasn't looking for anything. I, I attracted it. And when I saw it, I was like intrigued. And then I realized I listed the aspects of this business that I'm starting. And it checks off everything that I truly love doing. It's like you can have anything you want. And you can have it all wrapped up in one nicely done package. And so anyway, I'm not going to talk any more about that because I'm really not sharing it with many people. I've only told like three people in my life that what I'm doing. So I'm super excited. Um, so my career is going in a different direction. I'm still going to be here doing the podcast and I'm going to still be publishing my book and writing more books, I hope, uh, because it, it's been such a learning experience. The past couple of years of being a law of attraction business coach has really taught me. It was like a, a really intense course on how to attract 
an amazing business and I'm attracting an amazing business. That's not the business that I started. (laughs) So it's really, uh, it's an interesting journey. And what I've learned is to let go of things that don't work for me anymore, that I don't have passion for anymore. And, um, and to keep expanding. I, I love change. I love expansion. I love doing new things. I love, I don't love doing the same thing every day. I don't love, um, well, I don't love trying to make things work. I don't love any of that. I love expansion. I love new ideas. I love meeting new people. I love, um, really finding out who I am. I love, um, I love all that. So I love doing new things and I love, I just love it. And so I've attracted something really completely different, but it makes so much sense for me. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I love the universe so much. I love law of attraction. I love how if you focus on the things that you appreciate that you love in your life, that just in general, just the things that you love doing, like I love driving. I love, I have a whole list of things that I love doing and I appreciate them. Like I affirm them. I appreciate them. I do them often. I do them for, um, just for fun. And now it's like the universe is like, you love all of these things. So here's a business that incorporates everything you love, including making lots of money very easily. There's just, there's probably 50 things on my list that I have compiled just vibrationally, just like without writing them down, just as they, as I was doing them in my life, I was like, God, I really love this. I love doing this. I love this aspect. I love this. And I just called more of that in. And now the universe is like, hey, you know what? These lists of 20, 30 things that you really love, there's actually a business doing this. And here you go. Anyhow, totally didn't expect to talk about that at all. So um, anyway, um, so I'll still be here and I, I'm just limiting, um, another aspect of my business that, um, I no longer enjoy. So that's, that's totally fine. And we get to do that as business owners, we get to decide what we like doing and what we don't. And if we really don't like doing something and we're just trying to push it, it's not going to work. It just doesn't work anymore. What used to work in the past, it, it totally can not work in the future because you change we all change over time and and that's totally fine so we don't have to make things keep happening or making them work when we just don't want to do them anymore <laughs> so those are big lessons and I talked a lot about stuff similar to that uh, last week about don't do things that you don't love doing like if you're trying to make your business work but you just don't like many aspects of it it's not going to work go, you know, focus on the things that you love doing just in general in your life, just in general, nothing to do with about making money, just in general, focus on those aspects and just be happy with your life. And you will attract the perfect business for you. You will, because you have that desire and you're putting it out there. Anyway, let's jump into today's subject because I want to get through actually this entire week's um, until Halloween. I want to get this whole week's done today. I've got the time. My intention is to do it today. So we will see what goes on. Okay, so October 26th from my book, The Inspired Entrepreneur. Here we go. The sureness of your business comes from the sureness of your feeling about your business. This was something that I learned while creating my business. I found when I wobbled, my clients wobbled, meaning if I had self-doubt or worry about them having issues or leaving, that's what would happen. I had to become very emotionally strong regarding my business for it to flourish. We talked about that a bit, a lot yesterday in yesterday's podcast about wobbling about like money issues. Like if you have payment plans and you just worry about them constantly not going through, guess what happens? You won't, they'll, they won't go through. Like you'll have people missing payments. And then when you have somebody missing a payment, just like kind of out of the blue and you hadn't thought about that and you focus a lot on that missed payment, guess what happens? It's like a domino effect. You will get more missed payments. And so, um, so for, for a little while in my business last year, 
I, I think, what did I do? Oh, I was focusing on just painful. Well, I did. Actually, 90% of my clients for quite some time were painful because I wasn't going to do payment plans anymore because I knew through law of attraction that if somebody missed a payment and I focused on that payment and then worried about more payments being not happening, there would be more payments not happening. Like, so, so I wanted to get rid of the entire, <laughs> the entire issue, which means don't offer payment plans. And, you know, and my experience in my business had been for quite some time that most people, like 90% of my clients paid in full for everything, no matter how much it costs, if it was little or, you know, thousands of dollars, everybody paid in full. And I really loved that. It worked very well for me. And then I kind of let go of that because I was just super stable in, um, having, you know, not focusing on payment plans, like, or not focusing on people not making payments. I was just very sure that everybody was going to make payments because for the most part they did. So does that make sense? So you have to be very sure you have to be emotionally stable to have a financially stable business. You have to be emotionally stable. And if you're like, Oh shit, <laughs> then my, my, my um, advice to you is become more emotionally stable. And I thought about moving my business in that direction of really f helping people become more emotionally stable. And then very quickly, I'm like, what are you talking about, Heather? You really don't want to do that. Because what that will do is I will attract people who are emotionally unstable. And what does that do? It, it messes up my vibration. So I've learned a lot through Abraham with vibration. I've talked about it numerous times on this podcast about, you know, when I was a therapist and as a coach, you know, really when you, when you listen to other people's mindsets and their beliefs and all that, Abraham's like, you know, it's just really in your best interest to mind your own business. And as a coach, you're not minding your own business at all at all. Like you're not. And so yesterday I, I came across another time with, uh, and, and, and I'm like, I told my husband, I'm like, I have to, I have to stay in my bubble. I have to stop minding other people's business or doing, you know, it's just, I have a personality that, and I've tried changing it and I'm just like, whatever. I, it's just too much work to change my personality of, or my identity of, um, I feel like I have really good advice and I do my research. I do my, I, everything's inspired. Everything is like, I don't doubt much. I just don't. I'm very emotionally stable. I'm very, you know, and I feel like I have good advice. Like I'm very, very sure of myself. And that, that only came from learning about the law of attraction through Abraham Hicks. I became very sure about what comes out of my mouth. You know, of course, it came from many, many years of working with people. I've been in the helping industry for over 20 years. Like 20, 20, 25, somewhere in 20 to 25 years, I've working with clients, you know, getting lots of education, lots of experience, lots of all of that. But, you know, I learned more in the last two years than I learned my entire life. Like the past two years has been the best education I've ever had. And that was going, you know, being a law of attraction coach. I've never had a better, better experience or better education. And now I know like why I've been frustrated for 20 years because I've been working with people for 20 years. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like you mix the vibration, you get, you know, it's really hard to work with a lot of people and maintain your vibration strong. So here we are. So you have to be sure about your business. You have to be sure. So, so my thing is, I feel like I have great recommendations. I have great advice. I have, you know, and then when people don't follow it, I get annoyed. And I don't, I like, I don't like that about me. I really don't. So then I'm like, okay, Heather, you have to stop minding. You have to stop minding other people's business. Or in my, in my opinion, I'm just trying to help people. Like something comes to my mind and then I'm helping people. And I'm, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? So, you know. 
when you work with clients, especially with mindset stuff, if they don't f take your advice or take your um, guidance, then they keep coming back with the same issues. And, you know, and I hear this frustration from a lot of coaches out there that um, a lot of people take like listen to you or hear you and say it's, oh, that's great advice, but they never follow through. It's the taking the action step. It's the changing part. And I hear that from coaches constantly that they get burned out with their clients because the clients don't take the action on the advice that they give. They come to them for their advice, but then they don't take it and take it in. And then they just spend a long time not doing anything. And that really wears on coaches wears on therapists it wears on people because it's like am I doing any good <laughs> and it's just frustrating so anyhow um so you have to you have to know is your business is your business the business you really want to be in because if it's a struggle to to run your business because it's frustrating or it's because you're doing things that you really just don't like doing. I know a lot of people that are running businesses or trying to that are very, very unsuccessful in their business because they're trying to do things that they really hate doing. And it doesn't work. 100% doesn't work. You'd be better off changing careers completely into something else that you truly love doing. They, they've always said they, right? The people out there, <laughs> Abraham too, of when you, when you follow the passion the money will follow. And there's reasons for that. Because when you're trying to make something work that you don't like doing, that's all resistance. And it just makes it so much harder. And that means that you have to work 20 hours a day to make any progress. And you get burned out and then you get even more upset. Anyhow, let me read through this again, make sure we covered it. The sureness of your business comes from the sureness of your, of your feeling of about your business. This was something that I learned while creating my business. I found when I wobbled, my clients wobbled. And when you work with people, you can end up wobbling over time. Not, not, not necessarily financially, like, cause we've been talking about money and payment plans and stuff like that. But like, you know, your, your clients show up the way that you expect them to show up. That's just, that's like with everybody, not just your clients. Like if you expect your mother-in-law to come over in a pissy mood, <laughs> that she's going to do that. And, and I know that that came from experience because you didn't, and there could have been some, you know, preconceived notions from society that mother-in-laws are the devil, right? I had a good one. My first mother-in-law was really great until, until the divorce came and then, and she was done with me, um, which was kind of heartbreaking. And then my second mother-in-law is in non-physical. I never met her. So, um, but you know, we have these mis, you know, we have these preconceived notions that a lot of times mother-in-laws are not the greatest, you know, they're not the greatest. They don't treat people great. That is a society thing. It does not necessarily, it's not always true. Like I said, my first mother-in-law was really an amazing woman. She was like almost my best friend for many years because I could actually safely talk to her about how crazy her son was. <laughs> so anyway, how frustrating her son was like, and she understood. So, um, so she was like my saving grace for many, many years, many years. I appreciated that relationship so much until the very end. It was like, cut me off completely. So um, a very hurtful situation, but, um, I'm staring at, I have the, I have the word hope, uh, a, a wooden, um, cut out saying hope. It's straight across from me on my shelf. So I'm just staring at that as I'm talking today. But, um, so people show up as we expect them to show up. So, Whoever it is, if you expect them to be a certain way, that's how they're going to show up. Our expectation is so powerful. But I understand completely how difficult it can be, that it can be, to, you know, picture, you know, to pull out the positive aspects of that person 
um, be, you know, before you see them, to really focus on, you know, the good things about them, to, to try to change how they show up. I understand that can be difficult when you're around somebody who is very strongly a certain way. So this is the same thing with clients. Clients will show up a certain way. And then it's kind of like you have this expectation of like, oh, the, you know, this one's going to complain and she's going to talk too much and she's going to blah, 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 all these things. And you get wrapped in, into this this like narrative, this expectation of how your clients show up. And then you, you're like cornered yourself in a, in a corner of, oh, God, I don't like what I'm doing anymore because I've created these monsters of clients. I'm not saying this from personal, well, maybe past personal experience, but you know, so we're talking about wobbling in all kinds of ways. Like instead of seeing your clients through the eyes of source, which is what Abraham tells us to do, sometimes I find that really difficult to do. You have to, you really have to, I don't know. I'm, I've just been such a different person. I've had a negative perspective for many, many years. And, you know, it's kind of hard to go from. And I know that's I mean, it's a lot of things that I'm saying right now sound very like, gosh, Heather, don't you have this together yet? It's just so much. It's so much. You know, I, I did not grow up as a person who was – a really positive person. I was, I was the opposite of that. Anyway, anyway, so it's still a work in progress. I'm still a work in progress. I don't have it all figured out. That's for sure. Sometimes I think I do. And then it's like certain people show up and I'm like, well, oh, I don't have that figured out. <laughs> you know, and I love, I kind of love hearing Abraham talk about Esther of there's a lot of things she hasn't figured out. And I'm like, what? You know, sometimes I'm like, is that a good or a bad thing? Like it just shows her humanness, but it also shows she's been doing this for 35 years. Doesn't she have it yet? You know, and I had thought about this yesterday. I'm like, what if Esther's listening to you one day, you know, like no disrespect to Esther, but it's like, oh man, I think it just shows the humanness and it shows like, um, I don't know. It's just we're human still, right? And we still have these emotions and we have, we're surrounded by a lot of people. And when you're working with a lot of people, it really messes, mixes, messes. I see them together, <laughs> your vibration. And it just, you really need a lot of downtime. I need a lot of downtime. Anyway, so let's finish this and then we're going to, we're going to jump off this. Um, if I had self-doubt or worry about them having issues or leaving, that's what would happen. Um, I had to become very emotionally strong regarding my business for it to flourish, for sure. Um, yeah, um, I, I have a lot of hindsight right now. I, I, I hope to write all of this, this stuff about my business in a book in the future of how I pivoted my business to um, start another business that's totally opposite of this business and how that came about and what happened within my own business that brought me to this place. And um, because it's so insightful, it's like, oh my gosh, so much I learned, so much. So anyway, you'll get to hear it one day in the future. Um, I'm sure you'll hear it by the end of this year, you'll hear more about what's going on in my business. So, okay guys, I'm gonna let you go. Have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.